All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We're here from the KFVS Digital News Desk. We have with us Christy Mershon, and uh, she's here to talk about her involvement with the Glen House and uh, some spooky happenings that folks can get into. Christy, how are you doing today? Very good. Thanks for having me back on. This is my uh, favorite subject to talk about, is the <laughs> Glen House and historic places in Cape Girardeau. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And as we were talking about ahead of time, one of my lights has gone out. So we've got a little bit of atmospheric lighting going on here in studio. Um, <laughs> and, and we're all, it, it, it just adds to the adds to the atmosphere. And that's, uh, that's great. Um, and, and part of that, you know, the ghost stories coming up, at the Glen House, this is a, a special event that's coming up um, ahead of Halloween itself. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's going on with this? Sure, we have been doing a nighttime event called Ghostly Tales at the Glen. Um, you know, many folks know that we've been featured on some national television programs uh, with ghost stories about the house, but there are ghost stories that go all the way back uh, into the history of the house. And we started trying to encapsulate those in the tours that we do. So we have Victorian uh, creepy tour guides who will greet you at the front door and we go through. And in addition, the Historical Association has a big collection of Victorian morning wear. And at this time of year, our standard tours, we talk quite a bit about morning customs and the way that folks lived at that time. Uh, and we have an arsenic dress in a casket in the front parlor. So we talk a little bit about the dress and, you know, what's going on with the funeral that we have staged. Uh, and then, of course, our own ghost stories. Outside, we have s'more pits. Um, so you can go back in the back and have a s'more. You can have a, a tasty warm beverage if you would like. And we have tarot readers there. So it's a, a way to get your spook on that's different from a traditional haunted house with the proceeds all benefiting the association and the Glen House. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. And um, certainly, folks, you know, that 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 combination of, of history and 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 the spookiness and the spooky season got to be a got to be a major draw. And uh, yeah, um, you know, as far as this goes, you know, I know we've had you on the show or on, on different programs before. And, and no doubt you probably get asked all the time about your favorite stories about the Glen House. But uh if you've got a few, or one, perhaps one, maybe we should limit it down. But to what 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 comes to mind that uh, maybe be a, a little bit of a nugget for people to to come out and hear more? Well, the funny one for me and on me is the very first time that I ever did a ghost tour, a haunted downtown tour, and went to the Glen House. I was not part of the association at that time, and I didn't realize that they had auctioned off a night in the house as a fundraiser. And so I had a group of people and I was telling these ghost stories on the front porch. Uh, Tom Neumeyer was with me and he also wasn't aware that, that they had auctioned off an evening. We walked around the side porch and there's a bay window and there was a creepy face looking out the bay window. Both of us were dressed in uh, ghostly Halloween costumes. We screamed and the ghost inside the house screamed. Um, and we realized that was a real person. And I think that's a point when she realized we were real people, but that might have been the, the biggest jump scare that I've ever had at the house and still gives us a good laugh today. Um, you know, honestly, the Glen House is an interesting place because it is one of the places where people who don't believe in ghosts, they'll say, I don't really believe in that sort of thing, except for that one time in that one house. And inevitably, the one house is the Glen House. Um, so it took me a very long time to uh, ever actually kind of have my own experiences. I, I kind of scoffed for probably a decade or more um, about the folks who had the stories. I thought, you know, it's a it's an old house and um, it's just a little bit uh, different. And so people feel uneasy and they think they see things. All of those explanations are fabulous until something strange happens to you. Um, in, a, in a very short collection of a few, uh, there are several instances in the house where people have been hit with money. And uh, one of my favorites, two of our tour guides were standing at the foot of the stairs. It was on a kind of cloudy Saturday afternoon and there weren't any visitors. And so one of them was sort of leaning up in the door frame, going into the front parlor where the music uh, instruments are. And the other one was standing on the staircase. 
and she had on sort of a little sundress and all of a sudden out of nowhere a coin fell and it went right down her dress um and so both of them were sort of puzzled and of course as you would do if something landed you know in that area you would reach in and grab it and when she pulled it out she had a coin from about 1910 uh, and so I got a phone call that said, we think we're going home today. We don't think we want to stay here and give tours. Um, that is a one-off of a number of stories relating to um, to money that has sort of appeared and, and hit people. And almost every time, whatever coins they are, they predate 1920. Uh, so either somebody is carrying out a pretty elaborate prank carrying around a large amount of antique change in their pocket, or we have some interesting things going on. So I always tell people when they come in, if you see a coin uh, laying on the carpet or on the floor, pick it up. We don't typically leave them laying around. And I'm always curious to see what the date stamp is on it. All right. So, yeah, absolutely. Fascinating stuff. And uh, it's always, it's always fun to have those, those experiences, right? Where you, you're, you know, to challenge what you what you expect and what you you believe and and that sort of thing. It's uh, really an interesting uh, opportunity, I think, with the Glen House then to become a part of that and to to perhaps have your disbelief suspended for a time and uh, and to come on out to that. Um, is there anything else that you think folks need to know about the event coming up? Well, you know, it, it's a truly great uh, vehicle also for us to talk about legitimate history. We aren't a haunted attraction. We don't stage anything. So if anything happens in the house, it's actually happening to you. It's an experience that you're having. But it's a really kind of cool way for us to be able to talk about, like I said, the, the really interesting pieces of history, morning customs, uh, you know, the, the very sort of strange way that, uh, that we use different chemicals. And, um, yeah, you know, one of the things that I think is always sort of weird is women have been trying to be beautiful you know, uh, through all of existence. And they were using things like arsenic and face powders, taking pills with live tapeworm larvae, things that today seem creepy and improbable. Uh, but we do lots of strange things still today in a quest for beauty. So we can have some really legitimate, creepy conversations about things that actually happen. And in the process, maybe you'll have your own experience. I should have sent you, and I'm, I'll send them afterward. We had an event on Friday the 13th, and I had a group of local teachers, about 20 teachers that came. And they were all sort of taking silly pictures on the front porch. And two days later, one of them sent me um, a series of photographs. And it truly looks like in these photographs, first one face is kind of peering out at them. And then in the continuing frames, there are additional sort of faces that appear to be in that window behind and this particular teacher was a history teacher so she dug in to all of the Glenn family history and pulled photographs of the Glens out and started to take her pictures and put them side by side with the photographs of the Glen. and there's a really sort of striking uh, resemblance but it almost looks like there were people inside the house looking out going what are they doing out there <laughs> like what are these strange people doing on our front porch uh, just the way the heads are tilted and sort of the the look in the photograph so you know um, I'm confident that these ladies didn't doctor those photographs and maybe they're just strange anomalies of reflections in the in the glass but uh, they had their own experience and they are definitely talking about it I've had probably 20 or 30 messages about that string of photographs that have been shared throughout our region and this sort of interesting experience that a group of really non-believing folks who came for a fun evening walked away with a, a little bit of curiosity about what they may or may not have experienced so we love that either way we hope you have a good time and you learn a little bit more about capes history uh history of the victorian time period and just have some good spooky fun Absolutely. All right, Christy Mershon, she's with the, the Glen House. Christy, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it. I am always so happy to get to chat with you. We have to do this more often, Clayton. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. To our audience as well, appreciate you all tuning in, being here with us. We're going to turn it back over to Local News Live. Stick around.